morning guys I uh, haven't been on here in a little while just been uh, busy here at the shop and doing stuff but um just gonna post a little video here about carabiners today uh, a lot of you guys that have been doing rope access or high angle rescue and stuff for quite some time probably know a lot about this already but a lot of you newcomers coming into the industry just thought I'd give you a little intro to carabiners and different shapes and dimensions and strengths and gates and stuff like that and uh, just give you a little bit of insight as to what's out there and uh, what they're used for and go from there first one i'll show you is the three different the, the three most common shapes so we have a pear shape, an oval shape, and this is called a D shape. Okay, look, uh, it might look like a D in your perspective. <laughs> um, and with those as well, there's different gates on them. The ones here from Rock Exotica, they have, it's called an orca. Um, and what you can do with this one is if you open it and leave it open it uh, allows you to be you know it's a lot easier to connect it onto uh, anchor or whatever you're connecting to and then it automatically locks and it shows you the lock symbol right there okay to open it okay push up twist open and then when you let go it automatically locks again okay so you can leave it in an open position um, when you're connecting them onto stuff right you, but you don't necessarily have to leave it in that open position it's just an option from rock exotica and that's with their orca series locks on their beaners um, next uh, this one is from Petzl this is called an AMD um, it has a tri-lock uh, carabiner gate on it as well. So push up, twist, and open. And you let go, automatically locks. Um, these are really nice. I like the knurled edges on them so they're easy to manipulate with one hand, okay? And you'll see on the nose here, all right? It doesn't have any type of cutout on it like some of the older carabiners that when you're trying to take them off they get snagged and caught on stuff and they're a real pain in the butt. Um, these ones are nice clean noses so that they come on and off anchors or off slings and don't get snagged. Okay. Um, one of the other ones, okay, this is another Petzl carabiner. It's called the Attaché. And uh, this is more of a climbing carabiner rather than any type of industrial rope access or rescue work. Um, it, it is rated for 22 kilonewtons, but it's not like NFPA certified or anything like that. So um, it's catered more to the climbing community. So you could use it in rope access, but more for lightweight stuff, connecting stuff to your harness and that, but not for any type of anchoring or anything like that. Um, this one has a screw gate, okay? So when it's unlocked, you'll see there's a big red paint mark around there to let you know it's dangerous, lock it up. So it's just a visual reminder that your gate's unlocked, okay? So problem with these ones though is under vibration, if you're doing power wash or anything like that, we've seen the gates actually start to come undone and then go back up and come undone so th these i'm not a big fan of screw gate carabiners in our industry but um i was, guys are telling me put them upside down so when they vibrate they vibrate closed well it's not always the case they still vibrate up and down so um yeah they're susceptible to vibration all right next um there is a carabiner also from Petzl. Uh, there are other manufacturers that make these, but this is just the Petzl roll clip. So this is a new carabiner, tri-lock, just like the others. 
and it has a little pulley in it. So these are great if you're doing any type of rescue when you can connect onto the line and create a little haul system right on line. And it saves you having to have a carabiner and then a pulley and a whatever, you know what I mean? It, it's got it all built right into the carabiner so it's nice and quick and easy. I should shut my damn phone off. There. Can't be that important. <laughs> um, now a lot of the beaners I've showed you already are aluminum, which is pretty common in the uh, rope access, uh, but also steel. Okay, steel beaners, uh, they take a lot more punishment than uh, aluminum beaners. Uh, aluminum's a lot softer, so you know, they rub in on stuff or they get gouges in them and uh, it, it really weakens them. So that's not the greatest uh, outcome. So you want good heavy duty steel ones. These are great for anchors and such like that that are gonna be in kind of rough and tough areas. Um, and they're, these things are heavy duty, man. They're, like to break one of these, you, you must be doing something wrong, all right? Uh, this one here is from Rock Exotica. It's called their Rock Steel. And it's also got a tri-lock gate on it that's rated for 3,600 kilonewtons. So that's, or sorry, 3,600 pounds. That's 16 kilonewtons. Um, and then strength-wise, it's rated to 50 kilonewtons along the spine. So that's a really strong carabiner. Uh, 50 kilonewtons is probably over 10,000 pounds. So like I said, if you're breaking this, you're doing something wrong, okay? So, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, about the shapes, they, uh, it, these are shaped for uh, a reason, for different purposes, okay? Um, this is the Rock O from Rock Exotica. It's kind of an oval shape. So when you use slings, okay, see the sling is, it focuses the sling to the center of the carabiner, okay? So it's great for slings and stuff like that or it, connectors that you wanna keep right in the middle. But the strongest part of a carabiner is always along the spine. So having the load kind of sit in the middle between the gate and the spine, it takes a bit of the strength away. So another solution is the D-shape carabiner. So it puts the gate a little farther away and forces the load closer to the spine so that when you're putting all your load on there, it's along the strongest part of the carabiner. And then you got your pear shape, okay? The, this has got a wide bottom on it, so you can use it on a regular sling like this, but it, the load will tend to move around a little bit, okay? And what happens is the load sits kind of right in the center there when, when it's under uh, tension. So it takes away, again, some of the strength from the carabiner. So the best option for this is probably your O or your O shape and your D shape carabiner. It focuses your load more towards the spine. When you get into thicker um, anchor slings, okay, you come up with this issue. Is A, you saw that it almost got caught in the gate there, so you gotta be careful of that. And then it starts to bunch your sling on top of itself okay that's not good either then same thing with the d-shaped carabiner okay you can try to spread it out a little bit more but still it's kind of focused it you know right in that uh, valley there so it's probably not the best one for this either that's why we have the pear shape. It's a nice big flat surface and it's designed for wider slings. Okay, so that's the difference between the three beaners and why we use the different ones. Um, you always want to put your sling on the bigger part. On these ones, it's usually down 
it, you can kind of see it's a D, but there is a wider spot on it. And then on the oval, okay, it doesn't really matter. They're both pretty much the same, all right? And then your anchor will go up into the the bottom. The, I guess it depends which way you look at it, but more the the uh, shallower end of the parabiner. And that will make the load focus straight to that point and try to get it along the spine as much as possible, okay? You don't ever wanna load this beaner like this, okay? Because it can shift on your anchor and it can go to the weakest part of the carabiner, which is at the gate. So always, you know, check your carabiners when they come on offload and then back on load. Always check your carabiners and dress them. Make sure that they're all set properly. You don't ever want to have a beaner that's side loaded, okay, or dressed in the wrong area because when you start to bunch all this together, okay, you weaken the strength of the sling. So keep it as flat as possible, orientated as such, and you'll be just fine, okay? So when you see these three shapes of carabiners, um, just remember the D shape one is always gonna be the stronger carabiner. And the reason for it, again, is its shape, is its two sloping sides push the load right to the spine of the carabiner, and that's what gives you the strength on the carabiner, okay? That's the strongest part. So it forces your load right in towards the spine, and it keeps it right there and that's the strongest part of the carabiner. So you'll always have a higher rating on a D-shaped carabiner than you will on an oval or a pear. And again, it's just because when they test them, the load always sits a little off center of the uh, spine. Okay, same with these, they wanna sit in the middle and that reduces a lot of the, uh, the strength in them. Okay, so that was just a quick little intro about carabiners. Hope it helped. And uh, if you have any questions, by all means, let me know and we'll be, uh, see if we can not help you. All right, thanks, enjoy. Let's go climb. Hey guys, so just keep in mind, um, this is just an information video. I don't consider myself to be an expert on the subject at all, um, though I have quite a bit of knowledge. I do, or sorry, I have been doing this kind of work, uh, the rescue, high angle rescue rope access for about 30 years now. But there is a lot more people out there like uh, Richard Delaney and Riggin Resource Lab that have uh, a lot more um, testing and more like uh, certifications catered toward this subject that I could give you, enlighten you more on the the uh, technical side of it. So they're also a great resource. So check them out. And uh, by all means, if you have questions or comments, make sure to leave them. I'm always willing to learn as well. All right. Take care. Hope you enjoyed the video and uh, we'll see you on the next one.